Hi, welcome everyone for the lecture 7 of uh, structural systems. So, this is the last lecture of uh, structural systems unit and in which I will cover, I will cover dual system which is a combination of frame and wall tube system, tube in tube system and bundle tube systems. So, first dual system, a uh, structural system having a combination of the following frame system if it is a combination of moment resisting frame and a shear wall or rest frame then it is called dual framing dual systems so moment resisting frame could be either a smrf which is a special moment resisting frame or imrf which is a intermediate moment resisting frame frame or omrf which is ordinary moment resisting frame so the two system is specified above shall be designed to resist the total total force in proportion to their stiffness, relative stiffness or rigidity. Considering the interaction of the dual system at all levels, the moment resisting frame shall be capable of resisting at least 25% of the applicable total seismic lateral force, even when it is designed for a wind or a seismic. So in this system, it is provide good redundancy and it is suitable for medium to high range building where perimeter frames are used in conjunction with the central shear wall core. So this can be seen in this picture. This picture is clear that outer frame is a special moment resisting frame or a moment resisting frame and which is coincide with the core which is made up of shear walls. So this core is made up of shear walls and the outer frame is SMRF OMRF or IMRF. So this outer frame is resisting 25% of the total lateral load for which it is designed. So it can be seen in this picture also. So this uh, central part or core part is connecting with the shear poles and outer frame is moment resisting frame. Another type is tube system. So as the name suggests this tube system is designed for uh, to resist lateral loads in a building it is acting like a three dimensional hollow tube which is perpendicular to the ground and this system was introduced by Fazlur Rahman Khan this system can be constructed using either of uh, steel concrete or composite construction or may be constructed using the both steel and concrete so the tube system concept is based on the idea that a building can be designed to resist lateral loads by designing it as a hollow cantilever which is perpendicular to the ground. So how it was constructed? So in the simplest form of the tube, the perimeter of exterior consisting of closely spaced columns that are tied together with deep beams and it is form a rigid frames that amount to a dense and strong structural walls along the exterior of the building so that many number of columns are placed which are closely spaced and that are connected with the help of deep beams so they will perform like a dense and structural wall along the exterior of the building what are the concept behind constructing this type of systems is the exterior framing is designed sufficiently strong to resist all lateral loads on the building thereby allowing the interior of the building to be simply framed for gravity load. So the exterior of the, of the systems are designed to carry out the all type of lateral loads on the buildings and the interior or core, core of the building is simply designed for carry out the gravity loads. So interior columns are comparatively few and located at the cores. So the spacing between the columns which are placed in the interior are comparatively more and they are located at the core. The distance between the exterior and the core frame is spanned. So here the distance between exterior columns and interior columns are connected with the help of beams or trusses and this maximizes the effectiveness of the perimeter tube by transferring some of the gravity load within the structure to it and increase its ability to resist overtending due to lateral load. So these exterior columns and interior columns are connected with the beams and this will help 
to transfer the gravity load some of the gravity load within the structure and it will increase the ability to resist the overtending moment due to lateral loads so here from this picture it is clear that here this is the tubular structure which is hollow structure and it is perpendicular to the ground and in a cantilever manner so when it is subjected to a lateral force either a wind or either a seismic and here you can see this is a closely spaced column which are connected with the deep beams and this will behave like a strong walls and when it is subjected to a wind force or a lateral force then it will create a compression on this part and tension on this part and these CD part and AB parts will behave like a flange frame and AD and CB parts are behaving like a web frames so this is a distribution of uh, compression and uh, and um, tension with, which is showing at here and this is a neutral axis so here two lines are showing that one is dotted line which is showing that column stresses without shear leg and complete lines uh, or um, complete line which is showing that uh, column stresses with shear leg so what is shear leg so the force in the web frame are governing is smaller towards the center so the force in the web frame which i already discussed that this is called a web frames ad and cd parts ad and cb parts are considering as a web web parts and so that the forces in the web frames are governing smaller towards the center linearly straight in as in as it is mentioned in figure b so this phenomena is called shear legs and the ratio of stress at the column of and the ratio of stress at the center column to the stress at the uh, exterior column or a corner column is defined as shear leg factor stress distribution of the flange and web columns opposite side of the neutral axis are subjected to a tensile and compressive force under lateral load which i have already shown you at here which i already shown you at in this picture that uh, this part is subjected to a compression and this part is subjected to a tension another one type is tube in tube system the outer frame tube together with the internal elevator and service cores so if the outer frame tube structure is together with internal elevator or a service cores then it is called tube in tube system the outer and inner tubes are act jointly in resisting both gravity and lateral loading in steel frame buildings so more effective in high rise structure because the bending and transfer shear are supported three dimensionally at the flange and web surface in the structure tube in tube system means the internal core and exterior cores external exterior columns as i already discussed that exterior columns are closely spaced but in tube in tube system that in uh, at the core the columns which are behind the columns are placed are also behave like a tube so these tube and tube this so this is called tube and tube outer and inner tubes act jointly and more effectively it will helps in preventing the structure because of bending and transfer shear that are supported three dimensionally at the flange and web surface in the structure the analysis of tube structure has to be based on three dimensional analysis using a finite element method which is called fem so in this picture you can see at here that the uh, exterior columns are also closely spaced and interior columns are also closely spaced at the core so this is called a tube and tube system and which can be shown at here that outer columns are closely spaced and inner columns are also closely spaced and this will act like a joint to this these two will behave like a, a single unit so that will resist the gravity load as well as the lateral loads act jointly and there are some uh, specification by these type of structure has been provided so if the minimum flow dimension is 30 meter or if the structure is of 30 to 60 floor which is of having 100 to 160 meter height then tube and tube systems are preferred another one is bundle tube system instead of one tube a building consists of several tubes which 
tied together to resist lateral forces. Such buildings have interior columns along with the perimeter of the tube when they fall within the building envelope. So, if more than one tubes are tied together to resist lateral force, then it is called bundled tube structures. And the bundled tube design was not only highly sufficient in economic terms but was also innovative in its potential for versatile formulation of architectural space. Efficient towers no longer had to be box-like. The tube unit could take on various shape and could be bundled together in different sort of grouping. The bundled tube structure means that the building no longer need to be box-like means the bundled tube, it is not necessary that the building should be a box in appearance but they could become a sculpture and uh, in a countdown manner it is a cluster of individual tubes connected together to act as a single unit the first uh, uh, bundle tube structure was completed in 1974 which is of 110 story 110 story of a seeds tower which is a first bundle structure in which the nine steel trench tubes are uh, connected together to form a bundle tube at the base. Individual tube could be of different shape such as a rectangular, triangular and hexagonal as is demonstrated by the building. So it can be seen at here that this is a shear tower. This is a shear tower which is of uh, uh, nine tube structures are, are connected together at the base and form a bundle tube. This is the picture and this is a 110 story so in which the uh, maximum height of uh, the tube is 110 story and it is a pictorial view of that uh, seeds tower which is also known as village tower so these are some references and thank you